So, there's a discussion to be had. And it's a comparison that's been online for the last few days, especially since the end of, <clears throat> essentially, Fallout coming out, which is the comparison between Fallout and the Halo TV show. Now, for a lot of Fallout fans, it is extremely shocking for a video game adaptation show to essentially exist within the lore without making major changes to the world and the universe that the show inhabits. And what I mean by that is when you take a step back and you look at a show like, let's say, Rings of Power. Rings of Power is attempting to adapt a source material that is both unfinished and extremely vague. And as a direct result, they have to fill in the gaps, which is why I give Rings of Power a little bit of leeway in regards to how they've decided to essentially take the story in their series, because they are adapting an unfinished work, essentially. But in regards to Halo, Halo decided to basically rewrite the characters, but then not only rewrite the characters, but also rewrite the story of the universe that is essentially being told where certain events are being moved forward, certain events are being pushed back, the interaction between certain characters doesn't really make sense due to the context of the game, uh, the way in which they treat certain characters that are super important in the universe doesn't also make sense in regards to the context of the game and the lore. The show for Halo takes place in essentially another universe, where... <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it, where certain events just either didn't happen or happen, but they're like 15 times worse. And then the there is essentially the way in which they decide to treat the character of Master Chief, where he's a lot more vocal, the helmet's coming off, the suit's coming off, he's having sex, his ass cheeks are out there at different points in times throughout the show. So you can understand where... Fans of Halo are upset with the way in which these characters that they love are essentially portrayed. And what we're essentially told in regards to the Halo show is, I'm sorry, we can't adapt Halo the way in which you would want it to be adapted. We have to make these changes for narrative reasons. With the Fallout show now coming out and us sitting down and binging the entire thing, we are now seeing that that notion is bullshit. The... And I'm actually going to jump back not only to Halo, but also The Witcher as well, where we were basically told during The Witcher, like, you know, we have to change things around because for the showrunner for The Witcher, it wasn't about telling a cohesive story. It was essentially about using the, 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 the star power and the sex appeal of the main character in the form of Henry Cavill, which is one of the things that drove Henry Cavill away from The Witcher series which is in the books, and even low-key in the games because you get to make choices, Geralt is very vocal. Like, if you understand what's going on inside of his head, you understand where the character is coming from, the reasons for the decisions that he's essentially making. There's a fantastic cast of characters that surround Geralt that also give input and wisdom that he either takes in or he openly rejects, but when he chooses to reject it, he rejects it in a way that you understand where the character is coming from. The showrunner for The Witcher decided that they didn't want to take it that route. They wanted Geralt to smolder. He had to do cool, sexy action things, and he had to like long stares and grunts and 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 short words because you know it's the sex appeal of Henry Cavill that that's oozing through the screen. As a direct result of that, the story gets essentially butchered. It gets absolutely chopped up, characters are moved around, things are thrown around, things are introduced and never circled back to because I guess they figured they're going to circle back to it in the future, even though this show is probably only going to get one more season. But the way in which the characters are treated pissed people off, pissed Henry Cavill off. And as a direct result, you've seen viewership for that show absolutely crater and tank after the first season. Halo suffers from that exact same situation, which is the people who want to watch the show, the fans of the game, are perturbed at the fact that when they sit down to watch the Halo show, way too much stuff is essentially changed from what they know in the universe to what it basically exists inside of the show. For instance, uh, 
uh, the the Spartans meeting the Covenant at a completely different point in time, reasons for certain things existing, uh, Master Chief having to not only encounter Elite to end up letting him go, but then encountering a different Arbiter from Thel Van Damme. It's, it's a lot, and it's a lot to essentially push fans who are really dedicated to the source material. And by dedicated to source material, I mean these are fans that not only play the games, but they read all of the books, and they probably also read the comics. It's enough to push them away so that basically the only people who are watching the Halo show and actually enjoying it are people that aren't basically used to Halo. It's just a sci-fi show. And to them that they don't know the, the, the source material, it's a really dope and cool sci-fi show, which is, which is sidebar, the Halo show is a decent sci-fi show. When they throw down in that show, they absolutely fucking throw down. There are certain elements of the universe that they nail, but the cohesive story that they're attempting to tell is not there because they've diverted so much that they've basically hit this point where they're just pulling from cool shit to basically have it in the show. Think of how the first two Resident Evil games kind of follow the narrative of the first three games. And then after we made it past the first two Resident Evil movies, all of a sudden it was just all the cool shit and current shit was being thrown into the movies. Las Plagas, fucking uh, animals being infected but not really being zombies but being way more fucking rabid. Um, the, what is his name? The dude who walks around with the giant axe, the dude who runs up with the friggin' chainsaw. Like all of these different elements were basically thrown in there and then it just went completely off the rails and in a completely different fucking direction that at that point in time, you were no longer really taking the Resident Evil movies seriously. You were sitting down to watch the Resident Evil movies as basically popcorn movies, which is, oh, I'm not here for the lore. I'm not here for the characters. I'm just here for cool shit to happen. And then when I get up and I leave, I completely forget what the plot of the movie is until I see a trailer for the next movie essentially fucking coming out. What the Fallout show has basically proved is that you can create a show that is a part of the, the lore, that is a part of the world, that treats the universe it inhabits with respect, and you can make it fucking fantastic. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be like, what about The Last of Us? Here's the thing. The Last of Us' story is very linear you really don't get a lot of options to choose what your character does, how your character reacts. It's point A to point B, things happen in the middle. Very easy to adapt without fucking it up. All you do is you take them the, the major points that the story hits, those major notes, and you just thread them along until you reach the end. For a universe like The Witcher, and also a universe like Fallout, there's the, 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 the idea of choice. My playthrough is going to be different from your playthrough. My choices are going to be different from your choices. The way in which my game ends might be different from the way in which your game ends. I may accidentally miss something and miss an entire just three hours of conversation and dialogue. You may play through your game and you may miss maybe a 30-minute side quest that's really, really important to understand, like, one character that you encounter towards the end. Our experiences are going to vary. What the Fallout show basically does is it doesn't shit on our creative freedom and our creative choices. Now, of course, when Season 2 rolls around, Season 2 is going to take us back to New Vegas. And that is going to, for the first time ever give a Fallout game a definitive canon ending, where usually before it was kind of a little bit, a little bit flexible. Uh, Fallout 1 and 2 in regards to uh, the Chosen One and his descendants, you know, there's a little bit of flexibility there in exactly who the Chosen One is who comes out of Vault 13. Uh, Fallout 76 is a whole gaggle of people that basically exit out of uh, Vault 76 and into the Wastelands to tell their own stories and, and create their own legacies inside that of the world. Uh, Fallout 3, Fallout 4, essentially the exact same thing. Character leaves the vault, goes on an epic journey, but everyone is basically isolated. What we're basically dealing with now, especially going into Season 2, is a definitive ending. Who won? 
Was it the Courier? Was it Mr. House? Was it Kaiser's Legions? Was it uh, was it some faction of the NCR? What state is uh, is New Vegas in? That that gets me. That's get, that, that gets me incited. <laughs> that, that 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 hooks me. That 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 keeps me there. But it doesn't dilute my experiences playing the game in any way, shape, or form. Which is this is the first time that we've actually gotten an adaptation that exists within the world but doesn't shit upon the world and continues to allow you to tell stories in this universe and build upon these stories in this universe. And that's fucking great. That's A1. That's one of the reasons as to why this show is so fucking good and why for me I put it above The Last of Us in regards to uh, video game live action adaptations in in just the, the sheer scope and how they were basically able to nail that sweet spot that, for the most part, for like the last five, ten years, we're basically being told was impossible to hit. Because showrunners need to be able to craft the story in a certain type of way that it is digestible to the audiences. Blah, 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 bullshit. Now we know that that's always been bullshit. We, we suspect that it was bullshit before, but now we definitively know that that angle that they've been feeding us for the last few years is bullshit. If they wanted to tell us stories that were perfect adaptations of, well, not even perfect adaptations, because there's always going to be something missing when you go from game to live action because you don't have enough time within that hour to explore all the avenues that a game essentially presents. But now we know that it's bullshit when they tell us that it's way too difficult to hit all of the major story beats of a video game when we literally just saw that. Where we literally just saw a game turned into a show that went, hey, all of those things you know about, they happened. But our thing happens right here. And our thing is happening while all these other things are happening, but also... It's also happening where something else in the future is going to happen as well. But let me know what you think. Um, are you, I don't know, are you tired of shows like Halo and The Witcher that don't respect the source material or change too much from the original source material to the point where you might as well just call this, you know, Earth 2 Halo Earth 2 or or The Witcher Earth 3 or something along those lines. Because funnily enough, uh, a lot of people in regards to The Witcher were saying that The Witcher show is just basically another universe where, you know, the games happen on, like, let's say Earth 1, especially since we know that Siri basically says that when she's exploring the multiverse that she's been to other worlds and met other Geralts and things along those lines. And we've always treated it as just like an Elseworld story. But I know the showrunners fucking hate that because, you know, they think that they're smarter than the people that actually played the fucking games. Whatever. That's another argument for another day. But let me know what you feel. How do you feel about the Fallout show nailing, staying inside the source material and building on it without shitting on it? Or in any way, shape, or form trying to downplay the intelligence of the fans? And then how do you feel about shows like Halo and The Witcher that change just a little bit too much of the source material and end up kind of fucking up the sauce? End up kind of messing up the secret sauce? Because in my opinion, I think that a Halo series that dealt with the beginning of the Human Covenant War with Master Chief would have been fantastic. Before the Halo, the, the run-up to everything, the training... The fighting the human insurgents, end of season one, is the first time they encountered the Covenant. Uh, changing it so that it's no longer you're fighting human insurgents, you're now fighting this alien threat. Things along those lines. Probably introducing Sergeant Johnson and the Planet Harvest. Things along. Like, there's so many different avenues Hitler could have went in. How do you feel? Comment below. Let me know. I will catch you in the next one. Peace.